I'll introduce us first of all. I'm Kurt McAlpin. To my left is Josh Cutchin, and Cindy Reynolds, and Ben Benson. And the name of our study was uh, Music Videos and Parasocial Relationships. And the purpose was to study how and why people go to the internet for music. This topic initially interested us because of the broad array of possibilities that the internet now offers for people searching for music online. And because of this, they can make very selective decisions about what media that they choose to use. So as a basis for our study, we used the uses and gratifications theory and sought to understand gratification sought and obtained of online video users. And also, we used parasocial relationships, which are one-sided relationships that a viewer forms to simulate a real-life relationship. And we were seeking to understand how these are formed through viewing online videos. So going back to literature for uses and gratifications, Cantrell in 1942 studied why people use certain media outlets over others and the needs they're trying to satisfy by that. In 2008, Hanson and Herodakis proved that viewing and sharing YouTube videos match users' motivations and needs. And from the parasocial literature, Horton and Wall in 1956 determined that people view television to form parasocial relationships with certain characters, such as soap opera actors and television newscasters. And in 2000, Slevin demonstrated that the internet helps people create community, form relationships, and establish identity. And now Josh will explain the method. Our survey was internet-based. It was IRB approved and also uh, was quantitative and cross-sectional. We felt it was especially logical to pose questions about the internet via the internet. Uh, we had two research questions, which were, how do people use online music videos to satisfy personal needs, as well as, what is the relationship between watching these music videos and parasocial relationships? There were three hypotheses associated with this study. Uh, first one was, audiences seek out online music videos to satisfy personal needs. The second of which said that this seeking out reinforces parasocial relationships. Finally, the third hypothesis was that personal motivations for watching music videos correspond with stronger parasocial relationships and this particular research aspect built off the work of Rubin and Peirce. Our sample for this was taken from 1,468 uh, email addresses from the University of Georgia. It was random. Uh, our insights of final completed surveys was 130, which yielded a response rate of 8.9%. Uh, although this is rather low for an online survey, uh, we found some research that has been published that had actually a lower response rate than even that. Uh, there were three waves. The first one was just a general invitation. The latter two uh, stressed the deadline. Uh, external validity was ensured by the fact that it was a survey and generalizable and the sample was random. Internal validity was uh, by using, uh, using pre-used scales within the research method. Independent variable was the watching of the music videos. The dependent variable was the parasocial relationship. The two main scales within the instrument were a uses and gratification scale and a parasocial relationship scale. Uh, both utilized a five-point Likert scale. The uses and gratification scale had questions such as, I listen to music because it's entertaining, I'm informed for conversations, etc. Uh, the parasocial relationship scale uh, had three items deleted because of formatting errors and had parasocial relationships such as, I believe that my favorite performer would find me attractive, uh, I believe that uh, I know my performer well, etc. Uh, the remaining scales further illustrated the role of music in people's lives. Uh, do you play a musical instrument? How frequently do you do you listen to music? How frequently do you watch these music videos? Uh, they utilized Likert scales, semantic differential scales, and categorical questions. A factor analysis revealed four factors uh, within these questions. All met a threshold of Cronbeck's alpha of 0.7 or above. The first factor was comprised of five variables uh, and it measured interpersonal attributes of watching all my music videos. It illustrates how people keep up with trends, top 40, etc. The second factor was comprised of four variables. Uh, and it showed the personal attributes of watching music videos versus simply the act of listening. It had stressed the visual component. The third factor had three variables. One item was deleted to ensure uh, that it was over the Cronbex alpha threshold, and it was looking at how music videos are used for entertainment, for excitement, or for relaxation. Finally, the last factor was a two-variable factor that looked at the communal online sharing experience. As applied to research question one, the four factors helped us answer uh, exactly what these motivations were for seeking out online music videos. Related to uh, research question two, uh, the parasocial relationship was explored by 
another 24 f variable factor uh, that we revealed through the unidimensional nature of parasocial relationships. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the results. First, I want to talk about some descriptive statistics of our sample. There were 46 males and 84 females, so there was about twice as many females as males, and it was a college sample. Um, we found that males actually listened to fewer hours of music per day than females, with um, the median for females being at 2.74, the median for males being 2.37. <coughs> But males beat out females in the number of music videos they watch per week, with males watching an average of 3.62 and females watching 1.84. This was also confirmed through a t-test. Um, our first research question, as Josh mentioned, was how do people use online music videos to satisfy personal needs? So we ran correlations to our uses and gratification skills. And we found a positive correlation between the exposure of music and our entertainment index, which was one of the factors that um, Josh mentioned. So that had an R of 0.385. Um, we also found a moderate positive correlation from internet use for new music and inter our entertainment index. And that had an R of 0.333. <coughs> so for the second research question, which Josh mentioned, um, we looked at what is the relationship between watching online music videos and forming parasocial relationships. So to answer this question, we did a correlation between our parasocial index and our um, uses and gratification skills. We found two positive correlations. The first was the benefit of music videos and our parasocial index, which had an R of 0.512. And the second one was a correlation between sharing and our parasocial index, which had an R of 0.369. Um, we also ran a couple of correlations between the frequency. And um, we found that if you regularly watch music videos, you had a moderate, moderate positive correlation with our parasocial index. And if you use mu music, benef uh, music videos for a benefit, you have a negative correlation with our frequency. Um, and on to Ben. So I'm going to talk about some of the implications of our study. Um, as we talked about, or as Josh talked about in our first research question, we looked at why people watch music videos online. And one of the big things was entertainment, either as a diversion or kind of as an arousal factor. People use music videos to find new music, and um, these people also were they they perceive themselves to be like very aware of music. So it makes sense that if you're entertained by music, you go on the internet and you check out and read about more bands and more music. So the internet it, it worked well with the uh, uses and gratifications scale that we used because it assumes that people are an active audience and I mean, you can type in any band or artist you want and you can go to their MySpace music page or YouTube page and people, it's like people put up, or musicians put up music videos and music so you can get that media for free and much easier now than you could in the past. Um, practical applications for that are kind of like music marketing, how, uh, how bands and musicians brand themselves online and how they can do that easily without, you know, having a huge radio hit. However, the meat and potatoes of our study looked at the relationship between parasocial relationships and watching online music videos. Um, as Cindy said, we found the more music videos you watch online, the stronger the parasocial relationship you had. So that was a good finding. And we also learned that personal motivations had made stronger relationships as well. So the visual context of the music videos really important in establishing you know, how the band or musicians look, how many members there are. Because a lot of times if you just have, if you're just listening to it, you can't tell that. Um, as well, there is a sharing component in there. Um, one of our inspiration articles, Slevin, said that the internet can form communities online and people who share music videos, you know, through links or just with their friends like that, um, they build stronger parasocial relationships. And this makes sense, you know, how many music fan sites are out there. People have music forums um, and talk about their bands. Of course, no studies without some limitations. We had a low response rate of 8.9%, as Josh talked about, that we found research published with lower response rate than that, but we still wish it would have been a lot higher. And also, just the case of our demographics, since it was just a college sample, 
we wish we could expand upon it by having more people or a broader age of people and that's our presentation <laughs>